Hi everyone, this is Andy from Med School EU, and we're going to continue on the topic of the cell. And in today's video, we're specifically going to talk about the cell cycle. And we're going to begin today's lecture with the topic of the cell cycle in prokaryotic organisms, because they differ from prokaryotic to eukaryotic organisms. So let's begin with that. And typically the process of prokaryotic cell cycle is called binary fission. That's the entire process and I have it outlined right here. Now we're going to go over this cycle and outline the three different periods that exist. Now first we have the, the first period which is the B period. This one is outlined by the cell growth. So it would be growth. So once the cell is made from, so let's say the two previous cells, we're going to just take one, let's just say we're going to take this one, it enters into cell growth phase and that's the B period, cell growth, and it continues on and uh, it, it can grow, it can enlarge, it can uh, synthesize things or whatever the prokaryotic cell really does. Uh, however, this period is outlined mostly by the cell growth and it, it is it stops so the B period is goes up until uh, DNA replication now as soon as the DNA replication begins as you can see this would be the origin of replication So as soon as the replication begins, the B period ends and the C period begins and it's outlined by the um, DNA replication. So we're going to highlight that replication. And what happens is that the DNA is uh, replicated. It, um, it is doubled. So there are two chromosomes now. Now this part right here is still unreplicated part and uh, this this would be uh, what marks once once it reaches this state right here where pretty much the entire chromosome is replicated and separate to opposite sides of the cell then that marks the end of the C period. Now after the C period we have the D period and the D period typically begins with um, the end of um, DNA replication and it is outlined by uh, something called um, cytoplasm division or the pinching of the cell membrane that would as you can see here I outlined that the cell membrane would pinch inward to divide the two cells that have separated their two chromosomes into different parts of the cell. So at this point, replication is complete and cell division begins as the plasma membrane grows inward and a new cell wall is synthesized. And what it does is it finishes off the cycle with the full separation of the cell, producing two daughter cells um, that would be shown right here and then each daughter cell would enter back into the same cycle going to the B period and the C period and the D period. So the D period would be mostly outlined with cell division. So that is uh, typically the, the nature of cell cycle in prokaryotic cells. So a couple of things to note. Is, uh, is that when nutrients are abundant, so there's, there's lots of food, there's lots of things to supply energy for the prokaryotic cell, what happens is that prokaryotic cells have no need for the B period. They kind of, uh, they kind of skip over the B period, not entirely, however, they go through the B period a lot faster once, if nutrients are available and they can go grow quickly enough to divide their cytoplasm as soon as DNA replication is complete 
and chromosomes are separated. So this, the D period is very short as well because the nutrients are available and it doesn't even hesitate to divide the cytoplasm as soon as this stage is reached. And under such optimal conditions, populations of bacteria like E. coli that exists uh, in, in our bodies, these, bacterias, these bacteria cells can double every 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, they can double their population. Isn't that, isn't that uh, fascinating? Now we're going to take a look at the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells. So what, uh, what we have is the eukaryotic cell typically undergoes three primary stages. And I have outlined them right here in three different colors. So the one going through in this big long cycle is called interphase. Interphase stage, and that's the first one that we're going to discuss. Now inter interphase uh, stage comprises of three phases of the cell cycle. So the first phase is called G1 phase, in which the cell uh, carries out uh, its function and in some cases it grows. So how we can label this here is it goes through its function and growth. That's what outlines G1 phase as you can see it goes through here. So uh, just to clarify this here we have two different daughter cells. After each cell cycle, after each round of cytokinesis and mitosis, we get two daughter cells. And now we just taken one of those daughter cells through another cycle just to depict what happens to that daughter cell. Now what we have is again it begins right away as soon as the daughter cell is born it begins with the G1 phase of the interphase stage. And interphase would be all of, all of this part right here. So interphase is the longest part of the three stages. And it starts off with the G1 phase called, uh, going through function and its growth. And uh, it's outlined uh, that it ends or it goes up until the DNA begins to replicate. So the DNA hasn't replicated yet. Nothing has happened within the chromosomes. What happens is the cell simply grows and uh, does its function. The cell makes various RNAs, proteins, and other types of cellular molecules, but do not make uh, DNA. They do not synthesize or replicate DNA. Another important thing to note is that in the G1 phase, a lot of the cells stop their cell cycle they stop dividing so the cells are not some cells are not destined to divide immediately uh, as soon as g1 phase is over so what they do is they go through this g0 phase that prevents them from division so for example if in some cases the cell in g0 may uh, may start dividing again. So as you can see, it goes back and re-enters the interface cycle and it goes through the vision. Um, however, uh, some, some cells do not and they are kind of in this G0 state forever. So, so for example, most cells in the human nervous system, they stop the dividing once they're fully mature. So once the cell is mature, it has, it's done its growth, it's done its function, it stops dividing. It stops at this G0, which makes it hang in the G1 phase. Or, for example, if um, the cell is going through its cell cycle and the cell is um, it has a mutation, or maybe the cell is was produced with uh, the, this function. So what happens is it goes into this G0 phase where it does not go through the vision and it is just metabolized by um, hydrolysis of, of, of macrophages. So they would just simply delete or destroy the cell or it would go through self-destruction because it is a dysfunctional cell. So if there's any sort of um, mistake that happens within the cell once it's gone through the division or whatever, through mitosis, it would go into this G0 stage in order to stop its 
uh, cell cycle and not produce more of these faulty uh, cells. Now before we talk about the S phase, that would be the next one from G1 phase, there's this really uh, important point that happens right here in between the G1 and the S, and that would be the G1S checkpoint. And the importance of this G1S checkpoint is uh, the cell basically checks for cell size, nutrients, growth factors, and DNA damage. So if everything's okay, and the cell functions normally, it has normal size, proper DNA, and everything's okay, it uh, goes into the S phase, continuing on with interphase, and basically the cell is completely committed for cell division that occurs right here. However, if the cell does not have uh, nutrients, if the cell is not the proper size or uh, does not have growth factors and it has DNA damage, then the cell simply will not go through into the S phase. It will stop at this G1S checkpoint. So that's why this one is very, very, very important. G1S checkpoint, it will stop at this point and it will not commit to division until either, either things are fixed within the cell or the cell is provided nutrients. So in the S phase, once the cell decides that yes, it's going to divide, everything's okay, we have nutrients, we're going to divide, the DNA replication begins. So the S phase is typically associated with DNA replication. And during the S phase, the cell duplicates each chromosome, including both the DNA and the chromosomal proteins, and it continues synthesis of other molecules. So it still continues its function. It continues to possibly even grow. However, what this S phase is really associated with is DNA replication. It doubles the number of chromosomes or chromosomal pairs it would have. The third and the final phase of interphase would be the G2 stage. And the, the G2 phase is uh, refers to the second gap. So G, what, what G stands for is gap, uh, because there's a gap in here where the cell does not replicate, and there's a gap here where the cell also does not replicate, because in the S phase it already gone through replication. So in G2, so if you are asked on the exam which phases of inter, interface stage there is no uh, DNA replication, you would say the gap phases G1 and G2 because they are depicted by the fact that there's no DNA replication within these two different phases of interface. So during G2, the cell continues to synthesize RNA and proteins, including those for mitosis, and it continues to grow. So the next stage here that comes is going to be mitosis, and what it does is it basically prepares the cell for the stage of mitosis, um, aligning uh, the DNA molecules producing different proteins that are needed for the cell to divide, and it continues to, uh, to do its function. So the end of G2 marks the end of interphase, and what, what it has is another major checkpoint right here, and that's called the G2 checkpoint. And the significance of the G2 checkpoint is that it checks for DNA damage because the cell replicated, right? Uh, the, uh, not the cell, the DNA replicated uh, within the cell. So what it really does is it, it made replication and therefore mistakes could have happened. So the G2 checkpoint does a uh, does a confirmation that the DNA was um, replicated properly, and it's all complete and ready uh, to continue on with uh, the cell division. Now, if there is some sort of errors within the DNA, the cell detects errors within a DNA replication that occurred in the S phase. What it will do is it will pause, it will stop the cell in the G two checkpoint and it will repair the damage that is associated with DNA replication.
before it continues on with mitosis. However, if the damage is irreparable, uh, something major went wrong and the damage is, uh, cannot be repaired by the cell, the cell may undergo the process of ap uh, apoptosis. So apoptosis, and that's basically just self, uh, cell destruction. And the significance of this is that it prevents the cell to divide with a mutation. So if, if you've got a mistake in the DNA, that has replicated it's a mutation and obviously the cell does not want to produce more cells with that mutation therefore it's going to pause at this g2 checkpoint and provide um, and, and hydrolyze itself it will destroy itself through the process called apoptosis so again let's label the g2 phase uh, it continues to do its function growth and uh, prepare prep for division. So that's the major functions of the G2 phase. Now what comes next is going to be mitosis stage. So the M stage, mitosis, the one outlined here, that is the stage of, uh, of that is the second stage of uh, cell cycle, which undergoes um, division, cell division. Now it also contains another uh, checkpoint here, and this one's going to be called spindle. Spindle checkpoint. And we're going to talk uh, further about spindle checkpoint and mitosis in our next video, uh, where we talk about the chromosomes that are associated uh, with the cell division. Now the final thing that occurs with uh, the cell cycle, the third stage, is called cytokinesis. And cytokinesis occurs at the end of mitosis. Sometimes uh, people associate cytokinesis with mitosis as it's uh, part of it. However, I'm gonna keep things separate just to make it very simple. And we're gonna talk about mitosis stage and cytokinesis separately. However, the two processes are aligned together. Now, cytokinesis is typically the process of actually dividing the cytoplasm and splitting the cell into two cells and producing the two daughter cells that would re-enter the cell cycle as we have depicted here all along. Now, with that said, is going to conclude our lecture for today. And in the next video, we're gonna talk specifically about cell division and the process of mitosis.